Hey everyone, we are live at 5 tonight. We're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects. What's one of my favorite subjects? Employees. Can't live with them, can't live without them, right? We're going to be talking all about that this evening. Um, I usually wait a couple minutes for people to come on. Let's see who's jumping on. If you're jumping on um, and you're visiting us for the first time, please say hi. Tell us where you're from. Um, I don't know if certain parts of the country are getting the storm we're getting. But we're supposed to, we're in the Northeast, and we're supposed to be getting this crazy rain and windstorm with snow and all kinds of crazy things. So um, we'll wait a couple minutes for people to come on. Um, and a lot of people watch us on the replay as well. So wait a couple minutes, and then um, I will start. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Cheryl Hazer, and I have a maid service company called Made Bright Cleaning out here in the Northeast in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I also have a power washing um, company as well. And I teach maid service owners how to grow their businesses, deal with these employees that are just, you know, just can be a little bit difficult sometimes, right? A little bit difficult. So my story is is i grew my cleaning business from zero i started it myself um, from the ground up when my son was little when i was a single mother um, i've taken it over to seven hundred thousand a year and it is growing it's showing no signs of slowing down and what i do is i teach you my exact strategies my clients are getting amazing results i'm teaching exactly what i do and what i still do um, in my business today and my clients are having great great results um, so we're gonna get started I just wanted to have a couple of quick announcements two things number one I have a YouTube page um, I am super excited I listened to all of you when you said hey wouldn't it be cool if you had a YouTube page so I created a YouTube page it now has all of my trainings and my testimonials and my client interviews it's a great place to binge watch some of um, the past live at fives that I do. The trainings, um, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. There's going to be more. I've just launched it. We just launched it last week, actually. So you can search through um, all of the videos. There's 94 videos up there. Check out some of the trainings and hopefully they will be helpful for you. So that was announcement number one. Announcement number two is I was speaking with Amar this week from Zenmade, um, and he has asked me to do some more content training for them. So stay tuned on info for that. Um, it might be in the way of an email blast, a blog, an actual live training, a case study, all kinds of things. So um, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing some interviews with Amar and different people um, in the um, sales and marketing um, space rather so we're gonna be adding some some new things here so I just wanted to drop in and, and kind of say like we have a couple exciting things going on so tonight's training I just want to say one of the members I asked a few weeks back one of the members um, wanted me to do a training on this topic Beth Ross Huck if you're listening or watching this on replay I should have actually tagged you and told you I was doing this um, great suggestion on this topic I am sure this has happened to you, um, it's happened to me, right? It's happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to a lot of you. Loyalty, who here has had staff that hasn't been loyal? Anyone here have staff that hasn't been loyal? Um, it looks like I'm having an issue here. What is this? Okay, let me check this, Let's see if we can you know what I have no viewers on here Facebook just sent me a message saying there might be something there might be something wrong that could be interesting let me just check and see if anyone has messaged me because we could be having a problem here let's see has anyone messaged me yet they have not we're having a problem with this Wow, that is crazy um let's see huh. no one is on here i don't know there's there's some sort of a problem going on here let's just see saying something if you can hear me 
tell me you can hear me. I'm going to see if I can switch here. Okay. All right. I'm just going to continue. I'm just going to continue on this. I can't see anyone. Um, I, like usually it says like, oh, hi, so-and-so is on. I can't see anyone on here. So very, very strange. Very strange. Um, but this, um, all right, let me just find this. Well, wow, this is kind of a mess tonight. I apologize. I apologize for this. Um, let's see where I was. Okay. So you got my announcements. I think you did. Um, okay. Let's start off with tonight's training. Um, and we're going to start off with the definition of loyalty. So loyalty can mean many things. It can mean, we can be talking about a loving relationship in a partnership, but for all intents and purposes, we're going to talk about employee employer relationships. So Loyalty is a strong feeling of allegiance, um, dedication, faithfulness toward one person or a group or an organization um, or a cause or a belief. So it involves a commitment to stand by someone or something through both favorable and unfavorable circumstances. So, you know, you can dem demonstrate unwavering support, trust, reliability, you know, all kinds of things like that. And loyalty often entails prioritizing the interest and the well-being of the object of the loyalty and it may involve sacrifices and efforts to maintain that relationship or association right with a business so loyalty can be expressed through actions it can be expressed through words emotions and is typically regarded as the virtue that fosters your trust your mutual respect and enduring relationships so here is the thing people want to work for someone they like so as a boss, you need to be likable. Most of you are likable. Everyone's likable that's on here. Everyone I talk to is a, we're all likable, right? They want to work for someone that they like. So when you interview someone, they're making a decision based on if you, the person that's interviewing them, are likable or not, right? Of course, they have to like the scope of work and the pay has to be good or decent, right? But overall, as you're interviewing them, they're deciding if they think they can work for you, all right? So that's an energy thing. People pick up on your vibe. You get a negative, mopey, negative vibe, whatever, they're gonna pick up on it. So your vibe has to be good, has to be exciting, not demanding, not threatening, but an overall nice, cool, and calm vibe Basically, don't be a jerk, right? So be a normal human being. Outline those expectations, the roles of the job. Be super clear, right, in your communication, the hours, the pay, everything they have to do, okay? And you can do that in your, your hiring ad, too. That's actually the first point of contact they have. So you want to be doing that in your hiring ad, too. So uh, I think a lot of times what happens is that owners get this versus us mentality. I've seen it before. I, I, I coach and have coached a lot of people, um, and I've come in contact with business owners, right? And I hear it all the time, and bitching about their employees. So they come with this, like, you know, us and them mentality, right? And you can't really portray that, okay? You gotta keep that thought to yourself. If you think of it, if you don't think of it, you can't portray this in the interview. You can't let them think or feel that energy, right? It's hard because some of you are jaded if you've had employees and they've not shown up and stood you up and give you this, you know, these cock and bull excuses for not coming into work, for lack of a better word, right? It's hard, you're jaded, I get it, but it's part of the job, right? And part of the job is being the boss, right? It's part of the job having these experiences with hiring and firing, right? I get it, but you have to try and not let that energy come out in the interview. You must communicate with people in your current staff in a nice, open, fun, friendly, you love everyone way. But at the same time, you have to rule with an iron fist. And that's where there's a lot of gray area in there, right? So number one, you gotta communicate openly. You gotta be transparent about everything. You're not trying to trick someone to come work for you. You have to truly believe in the opportunity that you provide. So it's always a good idea to keep staff up to date 
about expansions, about the company, about goals, because they really want to know. Even though you don't think they want to know, they really want to know. They want to be part of something cool. So by keeping them informed, they feel part of the team, and this is super important to keeping them. People want to be part of something cool, right? They want to know that they're helping build this company with you. So this isn't an this is us and them it is a team and you have to truly believe that you offer that team effort so encouraging open communication and providing avenues for employees to share their feedback their ideas their concerns is really going to help you here you can't build this business by yourself and just hire people to act like robots right that's not going to work right robots don't clean homes so they actually have to like you okay if they like your clients, they have to like their peers, people they work with, right? And of course, they have to like the job. If you want to hire robots, you need to find a different business because robots will never replace humans because humans are going to be cleaning the house from now until the day we all die. So next, you have to cultivate a positive work culture. Let me see if anyone's, if I can even see anyone. Yeah, I don't even know if I can. I can't even see anyone. I think you guys can see you six minutes ago looks like Kelly said you can she, Kelly messaged me and said you can see me I'm just gonna keep going here I'm not really sure what's going on but we're expecting like a big storm so it has to be something like that right it has to be so cultivating a positive work culture fostering a culture of respect of appreciation and collaboration in the workplace is super important how do we do this so we have to one we have to recognize and celebrate the employee achievements milestones contributions tell them they're doing a good job tell them you, they value you right if they do a good job and get a google review celebrate that in the office that's a big deal if they get a great tip from the client which means they did a good job celebrate them and tell them they kicked ass my girls did a deep clean last friday and they got the client tip $90 they got $45 a piece I didn't wait till Monday I called them on the phone and I thanked them for doing such an amazing job and told them that tip would be in next week's check that's what you do right most of my staff has been with me over three years some over four years and so I have a decent amount of experience I've hired a lot of people I have fired a lot of people even though I don't want to say it but no not a lot I've hired more than I've fired let's just, just let's just say that right um, I treat my staff well and they stay. This isn't a six-figure salary job where they're going to stay for the money, right? This is a general laborer job. It only pays in between $15 and $22 an hour depending on what state you live in, right? They're not motivated by money. They are not motivated by money to stay with you. They can go anywhere and get the same pay. They are motivated by you. They are motivated by the people they work with. They are motivated by the nice environment. They like the clients and, and they like the whole company as a whole. Okay, we'll get to clients environments in a bit. So having a great company culture is going to be key in helping you retain this great staff I'm talking about. <clears throat> they want to like where they work because they're spending 30, 40 hours a week there. So you have to provide a great space for them, right? Why do you think I always talk about the importance of having an office? Because it works. <clears throat> it works with gelling your teams. <clears throat> You'll have a hard time with retaining people if you don't have some sort of office at some point. If you want to grow multiple teams, if you want to keep it small, keep a few solo cleaners, 10 and nine people, <clears throat> and you don't mind if they come and go, that's fine. But if you want to grow multiple teams and a great managerial staff and beyond, you need an office there. I will not waver on this, right? You need a place where everyone comes every single day because it feels like home to them. Okay. That's what you need. <clears throat> I got a cold a few weeks ago <clears throat> and this stuff is still lingering on so another thing I do and I suggest that you all do it when you get your sap is encourage your teamwork encourage your teamwork and create opportunities for social interaction um, for bonding bonding with employees okay even if you have a hundred percent solo model <clears throat> you still need some sort of a team building 
effort, okay? Employee outing so they can hang out with each other. They want to get to know you. They want to know who works there. It can get very lonely um, when you're doing 100% solo model and people can quit if you don't provide some sort of a social interaction so they get to meet everyone, okay? Um, offer competitive compensation and benefits. Ensure that... <clears throat> You know, employees are fairly compensated, of course, for their work. We all know how hard this job is. And provide a competitive benefits package. If your state insurance isn't that great, offer insurance, okay? Health insurance. Paid sick time you should be doing anyways. Paid time off you should be doing. They accrue it, right? They accrue sick time. They accrue paid time off. Um, Family Medical Leave Act. We have that in the state of Massachusetts. I don't know if all states have it. So what that is, is it's required in your state. If it's required in your state, um, you have to be knowledgeable knowledgeable about that. So like if they leave and go on a family medical leave, like having a baby, taking care of someone and their family or sickness, they can get a certain amount of money from the state. We pay into it. It's sort of like an additional tax. We pay into it over the course of the year. And then the state gives it too. Um, usually the employer ends up paying in too much and you get like a like a refund type deal, you know, but um, that's another thing. So be familiar with what's going on in your state. So recognize your high performers, reward your high performers, bonuses, raises, other incentives. Um, you have to incentivize them. One of my new team leads, and she's a new team leader and team trainer, worked really late last Thursday I worked to like quarter or five right she was exhausted the next day I came in with a Dunkin Donuts gift card and I told her how much I appreciated her and I gave her that you would have thought I gave her like three hundred dollars you know they appreciate those little things she has a little boy I said take Gabe go get a bunch of donuts or whatever whatever you do they appreciate that three days later she called me to tell me she loves her job she loves the people and she's not going any and she's not going anywhere she's not making a million dollars that's how you do that stuff, okay? Um, but be obviously authentic about it, right? Don't just start giving out free money and gift cards for not the people that are just not performing, I should say, right? Um, another thing you can do is offer bonus structure. <clears throat> we do in my company, and when we implemented it, it completely got rid of the same day call out issue we were having right if they know they're going to get a bonus on top of their hourly wage and you have set parameters for that bonus to be paid out and they get paid more money per hour you get better production people are going to show up right they want more money but you have to make them work for it you can't give it to them for free okay i cover how to roll this out in the drop them up and scale accelerator and man does it work the biggest mistake i see maid service do is spoil their workers buy them breakfast every day coffee every day right <clears throat> this is what happens okay, what happens when you spoil your kids your kids get entitled and they think they're owed something it's the same thing with employees right don't spoil them because it becomes expected and then they become whiny little you know what right you don't want that right it's unhealthy you don't want them saying, hey, where's my breakfast on the breakfast? The one day you don't bring the breakfast in because you were late or you had, you know, your kid had a meltdown and you were late coming to the office. And the person, imagine you, you having that. You've been buying them breakfast for like two months now and you walk in and they're like, oh, no breakfast. You want to slap them, right? <laughs> they become entitled, right? It happens. So you want appreciative employees who value you just as much as you value them. So stop spoiling your staff. It's the same thing as spoiling your kids, right? It leads to entitlement, right? Another thing, provide opportunities for growth, for advancement. You guys have plenty of growth and advancement in a maid service company. Um, or offer opportunities for professional development, training, career advancement. They're not going to stay with you forever. Um, you know, they may, if, if you can get people to stay with you a year, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Any more than that? You're skilled at what you do. So provide a mentorship as they grow into management, okay? Support your employees to develop new skills. People wanna, people wanna grow, they wanna learn, okay? They wanna advance their careers. And 
You can help them achieve their goals within your company. Most people want to find a company that they can grow with and stay with. They don't want to bounce jobs for the most part, unless they're young, right? And your company <clears throat> could be the one you grow with. Do you offer uh, team leader positions? team trainer positions, quality control positions, someone that drives around and checks everything, office manager, VA, right? You offer anything like that because growth is super important to people. It's super important to people. Another thing that I hear in my interviews, when I interview people that have come from another job, I say, why are you leaving? Why are you looking to go in the cleaning industry? I heard this one this week. Someone said, because there wasn't a work-life balance. They worked, um, oh, you know what? They were working for Amazon. They were working 12-hour days. They were working um, driving truck for 12 hours. They People don't like it. Even though you only work four days a week, they said it's really tough with balancing if you have kids and stuff like that. So um, she's coming over to, us, over to us from Amazon. She had um, prior cleaning experience before that, like in the hotel industry, but she's coming from Amazon. So... That's, those are some of the things you're going to hear. So you have to respect your employee's time. And you have to prioritize their work life and healthy balance. You have to be concerned um, with that. Okay? You can't just be that mean boss in the corner like 1970s, smoking a cigarette, yelling and screaming and being miserable. You can't do that. So offer flexible work arrangements. Give them days off when they need to go to the kids' recital. I mean, you can't keep them from stuff like that right don't have an hour over this because you need to cover the schedule i get it i get it you need to cover the schedule i need to cover the schedule i get that but you have to be human there's no way around it right you have to accommodate your employees personal needs and responsibilities to a point you can't let them abuse you right but to a point um, you have to encourage employees to take breaks, take vacation, take time off, take a Monday off, take a three-day weekend, right, and rejuvenate. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Liz, who works um, for us, she's been with me two and a half years now. Um, she was working at a hotel as a supervisor before, right when she was, right before she interviewed with us, and her dad was in construction, um, had an accident, fell off a second-story ladder. He was painting a house, and um, the hotel, wherever she was working, gave her a hard time about needing a few days off to be with her dad while he was in the hospital. Guess what she did? She quit on the spot. That's what happens. You push a person, they're just going to hold the middle finger up and say, this is it. I quit. I'll find another job, right? No notice, nothing. She didn't give a notice, nothing. She was like, screw you, basically. You don't respect my family, my work-life balance, my dad's in the hospital, I'm leaving. She left, she interviewed with us and came with us. She's been with us ever since. She told the story, the reason why she left is that they did not respect her family, work-life balance, and couldn't understand that there was an emergency, right? You gotta treat people right. Treat them the way you would want to be treated if you were an employee, if you were working for your company you have to treat your people the way you would want to be treated, okay? You have to empower. You have to trust your employees, okay? You have to empower your employees to take ownership of their work, make meaningful contributions to the company, right? Delegate your responsibilities. Trust your employees to make decisions. You need to trust them to make decisions and provide you know, a platform for autonomy and independence in their roles. If they're a team leader, they need to have some independence from you. They need to be able to make decisions, right? Encourage them to make those decisions. Encourage innovation, creativity, allow them to make suggestions to you. So it's not just you barking orders at them all the time, all right? This is making sense. I know you can't hear me. I feel bad that you can't, you can't respond. That totally stinks. I don't know what's up with my internet. But they said that this crazy nor'easter snow rain thing that's coming is supposed to cut the power. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, another thing you can do is promote a sense of belonging. So when you foster a sense of belonging and inclusivity in the workplace by valuing things like diversity, 
equity, inclusion, okay? You create a welcoming and supportive environment where employees feel accepted, respected, and valued for who they are as human beings. This is a lot bigger than you think, okay? You want to have your staff all feel like they're welcome there in the morning, five days a week. They belong there. They fit in, okay? You have to hire a personality match. You, you personality match when you hire. Who's going to be able to get along with Liz? Will she be good with Sam? Will she be good with Isabel? Right? These are all names of my, my company. Um, you have to figure, you know, that out, okay? Um, if you're able to write making sense, put making sense. I will put, actually, I am going to put, I wonder if I could put the, I'm going to put the YouTube channel in the thread. I want to see if you guys can see it <clears throat> before I continue. I want to see if this actually works. Let's see. Yeah, I have, it's so weird that the whole thing's like empty. I was like, oh my God, no one's coming to the training tonight. Oh, there you, there it is. You're all there now. Oh my God. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Jean. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Nice to see you. Paige. Um, I know. I'm glad you could watch it on live too. Angie. Paige. Amanda. Kelly. Tamika. Okay. If you, I just put the, um, I just put the YouTube page. If you haven't taking a look at it and you want to subscribe, support me, just hit the page. Um, all right, now I can see you. That's just so weird. Now I see it all. I don't know. I just must have had some weird internet thing. Um, but another thing you can do, um, and this is last but not least, is lead by example. Lead by example and demonstrate the values and behaviors that you expect from your employees by acting with integrity, right? Show your integrity, show your honesty, show them a situation where you had to be honest with someone, show them how you're acting. If you act, you know, if you want to see something in them, you have to act the same way. You have to be very transparent with this stuff, right? Um, your behaviors, what you expect from employees, you have to act like that yourself. So they're going to learn from you. They look up to you, even though you don't think this. Some of them, not all of them. Some of them are going to be wacky. I'm just, believe me. There's not going to be perfect employees, right? You're going to get some wacky ones. You're going to have some good stories. Hopefully you can come back on here and tell me all about the stories. Um, but you have to show your integrity, your honesty, your fairness in interactions with other employees. They're going to watch you. They're going to watch that. They're going to watch how you interact with the clients. Um, and how, you know, what types of ethical standards you show in your leadership. They're going to learn from you. They will grow by seeing how you act and how you conduct yourself. They are always watching you. Make sure you understand that. Because if you say the wrong thing, they're going to think you're going to, if you talk about one of the other employees, they're going to think that you're going to talk about them behind their back. Never, ever, ever do that. Never talk bad about an employee ever to another employee. Do not do that. Um, so talking about integrity in the workplace, right? You offer a service that's personal. That's why this is so important. You're cleaning people's houses. You're inside and outside people's houses, multiple homes each day. That is a big deal. Okay. And everyone needs to conduct themselves in an ethical way. We have important jobs because clients are trusting us and trusting our staff to be in their homes. And a lot of times when they're not home, that's huge. You're in their house. They trust you. That's an ethical thing. You can't be going in their refrigerator and eating their food. I've had, I've, I had an employee that ate chocolate from Disney, from the client's little girl's basket, chocolate Mickey Mouse ears. I was horrified. She ate it. I'm like, are you effing kidding me? Don't allow that. The only time they can eat people's food is if they offer something. Cookies, waters, whatever. Don't ever, ever, ever let them go in the pantry. Um, you would think that would be a common sense thing, but you never know what's going to happen. Um, but so it's a big deal to conduct yourself in an ethical way. Like I said, yeah, we have very important jobs. It's very huge. They have to act ethical and responsible at all times while in the house and outside the house because they're wearing your shirts. 
right? They're representing your brand. So that needs to be discussed. That needs to be emphasized with them. So having all of these conditions above as non-negotiable items can dramatically increase your chances of retaining your staff for a lot longer than you do now, okay? There's always a reason why there is an employee turnover. I'm not saying it's you all the time. Sometimes there's circumstances that are beyond your control, like when people move or they break up with a boyfriend and they go back to their home state. That just happened to one of my clients, Jamie, but she recovered, hired a couple new people. They were rock stars and she was off to the races again, all right? Off to the races, didn't miss a beat. Was it stressful? Of course it was stressful. But, you know, as a CEO, you're putting out fires all the time. You just have to get used to putting out fires. And then what will happen is you get good at it and then nothing affects you. And then you're like Teflon Dawn and nothing affects you, right? <laughs> so if you try implementing these systems in your business, um, I guarantee you they're going to be helpful, right? If they're done right, they're usually helpful. Does anyone have any questions? Because I think I can see if there's questions. Oh, there's questions. Tamika, I have both solo and teams. I have two. Thanks, Kelly. Sorry, I'm freezing up. You know, Angie, you're from New York. We're getting that, like, storm coming or something. I don't know what's going on. It's raining like crazy out here. Um, so hopefully, you know, you can watch this. Um, so if any of you are thinking that you need more support, there is more support beyond the lives. Um, I have a, a program, the Drop Them Off and Scale Accelerator it has a couple of openings because I've had two people graduate from the program and now they're on to the next mastermind group um, that I offer, the graduate program. So if you want more information, reach out to me, drop a comment in the chat, DM me um, on Facebook, on the thread. I, use, I don't work with everyone because some people just aren't ready for the level of commitment the program delivers. There's homework in it. Um, you know, I require you to you know, I can, I can lead you, right? The horse can lead you to the water. I can't make the horse drink. I'm going to give you all the information. It's up to you to implement and to do the work, right? That's kind of the difference. And that's kind of what, you know, what I mean. Um, it's not, a, it's not a video. You just sit there and go, blah, blah, blah. You're actually working, sending me back work and stuff like that, but it works. Okay. Um, that's why I don't work with everyone. It's only for the serious who truly want to make some great changes in their business um, with their hiring or creating a better sales package to get more clients. Um, I've just started working with a new girl today, Amaya from Missouri, and we're specifically just working on how to get clients, how to work on her organic game so she doesn't have to spend thousands of dollars a month on Google SEO and Facebook ads. That's what we're doing. Um, my blueprint for growing your organic strategy in your community is part of the program. It's a big part of the program. It works. Um, I built my own business to half million dollar mark without a website, without a, without a Facebook ad, without a Google SEO, without an Angie's list, without thumbtack, red bin, you name it. A hundred percent organic on social media built within my community. And I teach it to all of you guys. And a lot of people are having good results. Like Amanda Burge is having amazing results from busy bee cleaning. Um, out of Illinois. She's doing the work. She's showing up doing the homework and it's working and she's packing her schedule with new clients. Um, so I, what I do is I schedule a Zoom call with you um, to see if the program is a good fit for you. So if you're interested, reach out if you think you're ready. Um, my clients are getting good results, but they're putting in the work and they're making stuff happen. And that's what it's all about. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. Sorry about the connection issues. Um, have a great evening and I will see you all next week. All right. Bye.